Hi, welcome, Simon here, and I hope you're doing well. In this video, I'll be showing you a motherboard replacement on a Dell desktop. If you turn it around in the back of your desktop here, you can see that the model is Inspiron 3668, and this is how it looks like. And I'll tell you a little bit story about what happened to this desktop. There was a power outage in the neighborhood and after the power outage the computer does not turn on so more likely i suspect it could be the power supply that got shorted out or maybe the motherboard we tested out the power supply i'll show you what power supply is so the power supply is the first you need to remove the two screws on the side here so there are two screws on the side once you remove the two screws you can slide the panel towards the body so slide it down towards you and you can remove it so this is the power supply here um, the power supply is where you plug in your power cable from the outlet to the power supply and they, there is a light here and it's on so I know that the power supply works and I tested out the power supply is perfectly fine the voltage is stable and nothing wrong with it the only next thing I can do to troubleshoot would be the motherboard. When the computer does not turn on at all, when, when you press the power button, it does not have any power whatsoever, and the fan does not even spin. There's no sound or anything to it. It's either two things, either the power supply or the motherboard, right? Nothing is turning on. So we know the power supply is good. We move on to the next step is to replace the motherboard. So the next step is to remove the, uh, the front panel here. All you need to do is to lift up slightly on the little clipper. And once you lift it up, you can slide the front panel out. Put that on the side. Here you want to lift, just lift it up. This is just like a, a tray. You lift it up, it opens up. And here you can see the entire motherboard. Again, I would recommend if your computer does not turn on, maybe it's the power supply, change out the power supply and see if that works. Very straightforward to change the power supply. All you need to do is to remove, press and hold the, the clipper and just pull it straight up. And this is your six pin connector. And here's your four pin connector. So this power supply is very low voltage, only have two connectors. And if you're not sure where to buy the power supply, I will try to link them in the description below. You can either check it out through Amazon or eBay. And I'll try to uh, get you the correct power supply link. And you can just go ahead and click on that to buy. Uh, before you can do that, or before I do that, let me show it to you what the model of the power supply is. If you take a closer look here, it says, it says the Dell model. AC240NM-01 try to look for that model here or you, can, or you can look up for this model which is CN-049P I think it's 08 I can't read it alright so those are the, the, the thing you can look it up uh, check out your, your power supply and, and see if that works all right, moving on. So we removed the uh, two cables. We're gonna remove the Wi-Fi. This is just a Phillips screwdriver. Remove that one screw and the bracket. Put them on the side. Slide the Wi-Fi to your left. And that's how you remove it. Okay, so the next step is to remove the SATA cable. The SATA cable, you can just pull it straight up. The blue is for the blue, the white is for the orange. So make sure you know where the cable is gonna go afterwards. This one is your power for your hard drive. There's a little clipper here, press and pull straight up. Here is your DDR4 RAM. What you wanna do is you wanna push both sides, left and right, just open up that little clipper and you can just slide out the 
8 gigs DDR4 desktop RAM. If you're interested to upgrade your computer, you can upgrade additional 8 gigs. So one each, and there will be 8 and 8. You have 16 gigs of RAM. All right, move on. We need to transfer the CPU fan, the heatsink, over to the new motherboard. So go ahead and remove the screw. The screw doesn't come out, so you just have to keep twisting. Twist until it, you feel like it's loose. Uh, you should stop twisting. All right. And just pull the CPU fan connector straight up. That's how you remove the CPU heatsink. And this is a good time for you to either clean out and apply a new thermal paste on the CPU. It looks like the CPU is quite dry. There's no more thermal paste on it. I will be cleaning this up and apply a new thermal paste. All right, so the next step is to press and slide it out a little bit. This little clipper holds on to the CPU. I can see rust start building up on the, uh, the corner here. So this got to be due to moisture around the, uh, well, it could be, not too sure. I don't think, well, anyway, I see rust on that side. So you lift up the CPU, we're going to clean the CPU out by using, we're going to use, um, we're going to use this one, alcohol wipes. Okay, so what you want to do is go ahead and wipe it down. I know I'm scraping all the thermal paste onto my motherboard. Well, that motherboard is broken, so we don't need to use that. And uh, yeah, so this is the Intel i3. Let's leave it here for a second. I'm going to clean the... Uh, the heat sink as well. All right, so it's all done. The next step, we need to remove the motherboard. Let's go ahead and Get the screwdriver, unscrew, So they, they are seven screw holding onto the motherboard. Once you remove all the seven screw on the motherboard, no, nope, sorry, eight screw. I was looking for that one little screw. It was hiding right here. Okay, eight screws total to remove the motherboard. So once you remove all the eight screw, you can just slide the entire motherboard out. And here is the uh, replacement motherboard, okay? So let's go ahead and put that on the side here. So what's next is to install. We're going to slide it back in.
All right, so it's all the way in, in the right position. I can see all the mounting bracket is sticking out, which is good. Let's go ahead and put all the screws back in. So there are eight of them total. All right, I have eight screws put back. Go ahead and open up the CPU here, the bracket. We are installing the CPU, going back in. All right, let's close it back. Let's close it up. Now the next step we like to do is apply thermal paste. I have this MX4, the thermal compound. Let's go ahead and squeeze it just a little bit. I like to spread it around so that when I squeeze it, it would just go back. It would just spread it around. All right, there you have it. Now, we're going to install the CPU fan. The next step is to install the RAM. Let's go ahead and open up the hinge first. Once the hinge is open, align it in the right position and press it down. And you can hear that the hinge would clip it back in. Now go ahead and install the Wi-Fi. We have the Wi-Fi here. So the new motherboard comes with the Wi-Fi. I'm not going to use your Wi-Fi because my Wi-Fi is still hanging by itself. Let's go ahead and put this one back in. Connect the CPU. Uh, sorry, the uh, power supply. What am I talking about? All right, the orange go to the white, the blue go to the blue. That is for your SATA cable. Here, this little guy here is connect the power button. Let's go ahead and push it back in to this very corner here. And here comes the four pin connector. Push it back in. There you have it. That's pretty much done. Let's close it up. Get the front panel. 
install by sliding it back in. Turn it around. Get the side panel. Slide it back in and put the two screws back together. So it is pretty straightforward to do a motherboard replacement. You pretty much you swap the um, the old motherboard over to the new one. So once you bought once you bought the actual exact same model of the motherboard, all your data, your windows, your settings should all stay the same. Nothing would have changed. And in fact, you need to buy exact same model for this replacement. So what I'll do is I'll link like the power supply, the RAM the thermal paste on my description below so go check out the link in the description below direct you to ebay or amazon where you can buy the replacement for this repair um, but other than that if you find the video is helpful please go ahead and give me a like i really appreciate you for smashing the like button subscribe if you haven't and uh, comment below and let me know how did you do with the repair hopefully you are able to fix your computer after the power outage or things like that so um, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today. As always, take care. Bye now.